Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a game that I didn't really finish. As you can see here, there's in-game scripting, which is really nice. Uh, we won't actually use any part of that. You can see I load the level and uh, it has blocking so it keeps the frame rate high and the interface is still usable even when you're loading a level. The game is physics driven, it uses the NAPE physics engine. Here you can see me toggling different view layers for stuff like fog and lighting. The lighting is ray traced and baked into the map data. Here you can see me messing with uh, basically a bunch of sliders for things like hue and saturation and there's a colorized filter for, you can make the game have like a sepia or dreamlike state, you can blur the image, you can mess with the brightness and contrast, you can make some areas have no color, have some areas where the color is just really extreme, or you can switch the hue and have kind of a bizarro land kind of color. The tiles themselves from the tile sets, uh, that's grid based, however the objects, the actual entities with physics and stuff, they don't have to be locked to a grid. There's multiple layers, there's a foreground layer and a background layer and a fog layer. There's just all these different layers that you can mess around with. When you draw with the tile sheets, as soon as you change tools, it rebuilds the geometry, or not the geometry, but the, uh, the physics data. It's sometimes easier to edit when you turn off all the layers, all the, uh, all the fog and the lighting and stuff. There's multiple gravity directions. Uh, you can press a button and it'll change the direction gravity is going. As you can see, the engine can handle a, a lot of shapes. Just so many different physics objects can be in your world. Even with recording, the frame rate stays at 60. Here I place a fan and you can see that the objects react to it physically. Uh, basically you put objects in front of a fan and of course they'll kind of float there or get pushed or shot up. You can use that for elevators and stuff like that. The fan uh, shoots small projectiles so that you can kind of see that it's happening. Other, you know, kind of, I guess, like the air is whooshing by. I'm going to spawn a player in the editor while the editor's going. You can edit live while you're playing. Of course, uh, you know, resetting positions and doing stuff like that can, it can be kind of interesting, but, uh, Right now you see the player animation isn't working, that's just a problem with this build. It actually, he actually has a, a running, jumping, being hurt animation. Basically animations for all the different states. In this build I'm not actually sure why, it's been a long time since I've looked at this code base. I'm just going back over this game just to show what it was because it never got finished. It's unfortunate that I didn't show it. But there's actually an object editor where if you were to say, if you were to click on one of these objects, a box or a coin or something, you can actually toggle its physics on or off, you can control its X, Y position, you can control all the parameters that an object has, including its mass and its material. And when you change stuff like its material, it'll change the sound it makes, like when your player lands on it or there's a collision. This game was what I would consider my most finished game. Unfortunately, it just didn't get finished. The There's still a lot of artwork that was required. There's, we need 
a level designer or, you know, someone to come up with a story and all that. You can see I added a blood effect and you can see it actually stains the tiles. It won't stain the dynamic moving objects, but any of the static walls and stuff where the blood particles hit can be stained. Here we can see changing gravity's direction, the player's feet will basically point, you know, whatever direction gravity's going. You can see more of the blood and stuff. As I jump around and get hurt, there's a you fall too far and you're gonna get hurt kind of thing like that you can grab anything with the mouse here I, I've accidentally grabbed myself flung myself so hard into a wall that I died so I have to delete myself create a new player and everything goes back to normal Spikes and stuff like that already have logic for when you touch it you die there's basically there's a function run when you collide or uncollide with anything where you can put your logic here we're setting up a turret uh, colliding with his bullets of course causes pain there's blood everywhere now but the turret just sits there and fires right now this is a static turret meaning you can't tip them over but you can also have turrets that have physics that you can knock over kind of like portal you'll notice it looks kind of like the one from portal right now I'm about to spawn a missile which has a star pathfinding and would normally come after me but unfortunately in this build that breaks the game that was a game breaking bug right there and that's something that would obviously need to be fixed that's pretty much all there is to this game I mean it it looks like it could be a good game it's a good engine as it is now it's a good tech demo there's a lot of effects there's just so much work that went into it but it's not really a game it's not anywhere near a finished game there's no stories there's no characters there's just our guy and a bunch of obstacles and that's not really enough to call it a game yet this game is done in flash I use unity now um, I might finish this game because it was just so close to completion, but truthfully I probably won't be going back to Flash or Action Script. If I do remake this game, I might make it in Unity, but I might not make it as advanced, unfortunately. Because while Unity does have some very fancy 3D stuff and lighting and all that, it's as far as two-dimensional games go, it's just it's just not on par. It, it just can't keep up. I couldn't make what I made here in Flash. I couldn't make that in Unity, it, even if I had like ten times the time. This is this what we have here is 64 days into the process. So basically, two months of work, and this is the game that came out of it. In Unity, it would take much, much longer to get something similar. You'd have hardware acceleration, which would be nice, but I really doubt that you could have the same kind of look and feel without, I mean, a ton of work. So, anyways, that's That Dummy Game. Call it That Dummy because we never actually came up with the name for the game. So, yeah, That Dummy Game. Ha <laughs> ha